For plants that make seeds, not spores, but seeds, there are two ways they can be produced. The first is within a flower. Um, a flower will get pollinated by a bee or something carrying pollen from one plant to another, and that will allow the flower to start forming a seed. And within the flower, as the seed's being created, the flower itself will actually develop into a fruit which will go around the seed, sort of like an extra big suitcase, and protect the seeds that's inside it. It also helps the seeds to spread because an animal will eat the fruit and carry the seed inside its body, and then when it excretes the seeds, it's then able, the seeds are able to get planted at a different location than the parent. The other option is cones. Seeds can form inside a cone. Cones are created by plants that do not have flowers, but the plants will usually have needles for leaves. These are things like pine trees, Christmas trees. They, once again, do not produce flowers. If they produce flowers, they would have to produce fruits. Flowers and fruit always go together. All plants that flower produce fruits. All plants that do not, but produce seeds, have to protect the seeds using a cone. And cones are usually spiky in order to help protect um, the seeds from animals that would want to eat them, like squirrels. Scientists can also classify plants based on their seeds themselves. There are two types of seeds, monocots and dicots. If you'll recall, a seed has a seed coat which protects the interior of the seed from damage. It has the embryo, which is the little baby plant, and it also has a cotyledon, which is the storage of food. And it's often called a seed leaf because it kind of looks like a leaf. Seeds can either have one cotyledon or they can have two. You can see it almost looks like a pair of lungs here. And the name for the plants that have one cotyledon in their seed is monocot because mono, once again that prefix mon means one, and cot is the start of the word cotyledon. Dicots, the prefix di means two, just like bion and bicycle. And once again, the suffix cot comes from the word cotyledon. So we have one cotyledon versus two cotyledons. Okay. Plants that have one cotyledon, who are monocots, have certain specific characteristics. First of all, their flower petals will always be a multiple of three. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. I could continue on. Multiples of three mean they are monocots. Also, their leaves are going to be long, slender. Mono means one, and in a monocot, all the veins on the leaf goes in one direction, same direction. Finally, their vascular tissue is randomly scattered. If I was to take the stem of a monocot and cut it, in, cut it open and look at it with a magnifying glass, and I don't always even need a magnifying glass, we'd be able to see that inside are basically these bundles of tissue and they're spaced throughout the stem. And examples of this are grass, corn, tulips, and so forth. Versus a dicot, dicots, their stems have vascular tissue around the edge in a ring. A great example of this is a tree trunk. If you were to look at the inside of a tree trunk, you have this band of dark tissue. It's very spongy, usually hard, and then inside it you have lighter tissue. So the outside tissue is the vascular tissue that forms a ring. That's a telltale sign of the dicot. Also, its leaves are branched. They go off in different directions versus a monocot. Again, mono means one, so one direction only. Dicots go off in at least two directions. Of course, they have two cotyledons. And finally, their petals are either going to be multiples of four or five but not three. Three is a monocot. So here's a picture of the leaves of a dicot and a monocot. You can see the dicot, again, goes off in several directions, the veins, versus a monocot all goes in one direction. They're nice and smooth. And here's another picture that just compares them once again. One cotyledon, two cotyledons. Multiples of three with the petals, four, five. Linear, different directions, spaced out, 